Hello, it's Joy Olson, Blockbuster Fundraising, here live with you this Tuesday. And today I'm really changing it up from what I intended on speaking uh, uh, about. And, and I was going to talk about storytelling because I know everybody's into content and try to give you some really good tips for your stories. But hey, everything changed yesterday and it, then it didn't even totally change until today and here's what happened yesterday when i was going through my early morning emails i see an email from the agitator that i follow very closely with the headline everybody panic and i'm thinking wow what is this and so i read the email with interest and guess what they say that it might not be necessary to run into the streets wailing, but all of us here in the development fundraising business need to be thinking about retention. And we need to be getting a little bit panicked about the latest retention news, all right? Okay, the agitator says that back in April, when they looked at the final 2017 Fundraising Effectiveness Project Report, FEP, that they felt like the good news was that retention was up, and that's what they reported to us. But they also said that the bad news was that those gains might not be sustainable. They gave some reasons why, but the implications were there that we all needed in the development fundraising business to rebuild our base of donors and, and worry that these 2017 gains could possibly be very short-lived. All right. Agitator says this worry was well-founded because, because last week, the 2018 Fundraising Effectiveness Project Report, FEP, came out for the first six months of 2018. Listen up. Year over year, total donors are down 6.6%. And new donors are down 9.2%. And new retained donors are down 18%. This is, a, this is a lot of damn news. And repeat retained donors are even down. And they're down 2.1%. And my friends in fundraising, retention is down 6.4%. This, this is not good news, but thank goodness it's news that we can review and think about right now because we may be getting a little bit comfortable. Even though this has been a year of tremendous contention, times have seemed better. People have seemed to have more money to spend, uh, more people have jobs. It just seems like times have been a little bit better. But... The first six months in 2018 were not good for retention when the data was compiled. So the good news for us is today is that we have three months left. <laughs> and the agitator says from their perspective, that's the only good news. And they also say, believe them because they've really looked through this report. They've looked for the good news. They're the silver kind of lining guys and every silver learning that, lining that they saw, they said turned out to be more cloud. Well, then they asked the question, were there any donor life cycles that had better retention than last year? No. No, they say. The agitator said they were all down. Given that large donors saved us last year, in 2017, 
were there any donor amounts that had better giving levels than last year? Agitators answer. After analyzing this latest FEP 2000 report, no, not at all. Well, given that we've seen number of donors decrease before, did the revenue from donors go up thanks to larger gifts? No, another big resounding no from the agitator. It said that helped a little, but overall revenue was still down 2% year over year. Gee, well, were the first two quarters of 2017 especially good months, giving us a tough act to follow? Again, the agitator answers no. Retention was down year over year in 2017 also. In fact, put together, they say that 2018's first two quarters had 23% fewer new donors and 46% fewer new retained donors than the same quarters just two years ago. What's happening? Agitator says that the best we can hope for and drive for is that perhaps gifts and retention are shifting to the end of the year from early in the year. But the agitator suspects that last year was an anomaly with Hurricane Maria and year-end changes to the tax code that drove a one-time spike in end-of-year giving. And they say at the very least, at the very least, this does not pretend well for many organizations that run membership campaigns that start at the beginning of the year. Well, if this is the new normal, the agitator says they don't think it's going to be organizations with big reserves they, who survive it. Did you hear that? They don't think it's going to be the organization with big reserves who survive it. It's going to be those that put their resources into building and knowing about their donor file rather than their bank account. Those become an annuity, a solid. Although with this retention news, the agitator says, slightly less solid than before. They're, they're, they're a foundation from which to build. Well, this was a pretty incredible blog, and I, for one, I, I really couldn't believe it. It was very sobering reflection on the latest retention data. So, did it give many comments? Well, the first comment said, thank you for sounding the alarm on the quarterly fundraising report. And then they added, even more shocking than these trends is the number of fundraisers that have no idea how their organization compares against others, and more important, against themselves. They might know that acquisition is looking a little soft, or mm, the August appeal response rates are down, but a few big gifts are helping revenue. But... If you ask them about mid-year retention rates for new, existing, and lapsed donors, most likely, she says, you'll see a blank look followed by a series of excuses around time resources, database problems, etc., etc. Well, then she asked the question, could a medical professional ethically prescribe meds without taking your weight and blood pressure? No, not, not at all. Well, so the same holds true for fundraisers. Are we making huge financial decisions based on very little information? 
She says, we need to hold ourselves to a better standard. Approach all of your marketing decisions, your fundraising decisions with facts based on math science. How are you doing? How are you really doing? What is your retention rate? What does it look like? So if you're, if you're interested on more of these uh, FEP results, uh, I'll put the uh, link up on the screen. And you can also find a place there to compare. Uh, they'll help you compare your rates, what your rates are, are looking like. Jay Love also responded to this agitator blog. And he mentioned too, I am so surprised about how few responses there are here since this is quite significant. Perhaps this indicates a lack of understanding about the need for change. I agree with that. I, I think we've as fundraisers possibly have just not worried enough about our retention rate, about our what resources, what personalization, what what are we putting into retention? Uh, how are we how are we getting to know our donors? How are we getting to know what they care about and and talk to them and make sure that they know that we are appreciating them and show them show them the impact of their gift and how that fits in with what they care about all right well then today so i, I was thinking well should i get into this it's kind of bad news and it's kind of more fun this time of year to, to talk to you about your good stories and getting ready for year-end fundraising and I thought, you know, this is awfully important news. And the good news is, is we've got three months to really work on this, to pull our retention together, to make sure that we're on the right track. And then today I read another email blog from Roger Craver. And Roger Craver, I've got his book. I just looked down. I'm going to pull it up at the end. Has written, I think, one of the best books out there on retention fundraising. And I'll show you in a minute. But here's what he wrote today. He said, quote, I shuddered as I read Nick's post on the latest and dismally, dismal, declining donor retention rates. Here are the sorry figures from the FEP comparing the first six months of 2018 with those of 2017. Total donors are down 6.6%. New, do new donors down 9.2%. New retained donors down 18%. Repeat retained donors down 2.1%. These are our repeat donors. We're not even retaining them right now. And retention overall is down 6.4%. Roger Craver goes on to say, for the past decade, overall donor retention rates have been below 50% and continue to decline. The overall rate now stands at 45.5%. Breaking that down further, new donor retention now stands at 23%. And repeat or multi-year at 60%. Well, thank goodness for that. But still, that's 40% of your people that have given to you multi-years that you're losing. And all that work for new donors, you're losing 77% of those they don't come back. So back to Roger Craver. He says, quote, the most troubling to me is that 23% retention rate for newly acquired donors. This means that for every 100 newly acquired donors in 2018, only 23 will give in 2019. The other 77 will have hit the exits. Why is this happening? He asks. He says, 
No doubt there are many reasons for this hemorrhaging. He gives us a few. Quote, loss of Trump bump donors? Well, we've known for nearly 50 years that the flood of new donors whose giving is primarily triggered by outrage and political concerns seldom stick around very long. And this is doubly true if the causes to which they make their rage gifts don't take the time and to, and to spend the money to onboard them properly. But the 16,000 plus organizations included in the FEP are small to mid-level groups and are not heavily weighted toward the advocacy political sectors. So Rogers says, I don't think the reported decline is attributable in any significant degree to the cooling down of rage giving that has spiked over the past 18 months. Okay, well, he asks, is it the economy? Well, some analysts he says that I've talked to note that while the economy is solid and the 2017 tax cut law benefited some, there are many, many donors who have not benefited and whose giving is thus negatively affected, but is still a difficult economy for them. So while the state of the economy can make a difference in giving, he says, Roger Craver says, I'm not persuaded on that point. After all, retention rates were declining before the Great Recession of 2018 and have continued to decline since. Well, he asks, is it poor mindsets, poor practices? Having studied hundreds of organizations, some with extraordinarily high retention rates, and some with very low rates, Roger says, quote, I'm convinced that the failure to hold on to donors occurs in those organizations that place a premium on acquisition to either deliberately or inadvertently ignore the importance of investing what's required to hold on to donors. He says, I see evidence of this almost every time I ask two simple questions. How much are you spending to acquire a donor? How much are you spending to retain a donor? Roger says, without fail, almost every fundraiser I talk to can answer what it costs to acquire a donor. But when it comes to answering question number two, I met with a blank stare or a lot of beating around the bush of non-specifics. In short, he says, the sector is bleeding away its future either out of ignorance or deliberate malfeasance. He says, Roger says, I've worried and warned about this for a long time in, on, in the July 4, 2006 issue of The Agitator. I lamented about the burn and churn, volume, volume, volume mindset that had infected our craft. We have raised a generation of 25 to 30 year olds who know Excel spreadsheets but don't have the foggiest idea of the history behind the movements that they work for. Their digital dexterity impresses and intimidates the generation of bosses above them who have grown too well paid and complacent to even bother challenging and teaching them. Wow. Well, quote, adding insult to injury is the almost total neglect of our craft to break down the barriers and silos that separate the dependable, predictable, there's lots of money in it for us suppliers of the old direct mail regime from the fast rising new media. He says, my prediction for what it's worth is that this failure to think in terms independent from the conventional will do irreparable damage to the nonprofits we serve. Wow, that's a lot to think about. Well, he says in this Roger Craver quote, I believe my concern 12 years ago is still valid today. We simply aren't paying enough attention to the basics required to onboard, hold, and increase the value and commitment of donors. 
And he says, there's really not a lot of mystery about what has to be done. But doing anything serious about the hemorrhaging of donors requires the right mindset, the devotion of time and energy, and additional money. Roger says, since we started The Agitator, there have been 603 posts related to retention. We spent years researching the subject and distilled it in retention fundraising, the art and science of keeping your donors for life. He says, clearly, we are not making much progress. I love this book. You need to get this book because this really could, could be a big answer for you. All right, for all of us, not just for you, for all of us. So Roger Craver says, frankly, I really could use your help in understanding why so many organizations fail to understand this simple concept underlying the importance of retention. And here it is. If the average five-year lifetime value of a donor is worth $350 or $500 or $1,000. You know, it varies from organization to organization. And if an organization spends $25 to $50 to acquire that new donor who may be eventually be worth $350 or $500 or four more, then... Why wouldn't the organization spend 10 to $20 more to properly thank, welcome, and find out more about the new donor so that they could properly communicate and hold on to her or him? Why bother spending $25 each to acquire those 100 donors if 77% of them will be gone by the end of their first year. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, Roger finishes up this blog and he says he's coming back uh, on Friday. He just wrote this today, Tuesday. He says he's gonna be back to outline what he thinks the key barriers that stand in the way of proper retention are and five simple steps that any organization can quickly, easily, and inexpensively take to ensure their future. I think we all better look for this on Friday. And he says, meanwhile, I'd sure appreciate your thoughts on why so many in our sector resist and avoid dealing with retention. Wow. I hope this has you thinking. H how are you dealing with retention? Well, I hope you've thought a, a lot about it and certainly thinking more about it in Really, uh, besides Friday, tuning into what Roger says, Friday, get his book. I mean, it is absolutely, oh, it's absolutely essential for good retention. And in the very last chapter, he's he has cliff notes. It, it's a wonderful. If you go on Amazon and look through the table of contents, you'll you'll see how good th th this book is. But then the very last chapter, or nearly the last chapter, he has cliff notes for retention uh, that kind of sum up the entire book. And I thought I'd go over a couple of those with you here. He says, measure your vital signs. You know, know what's going on. Get in that database and understand your reports. Know what's going on. And then he says, Focus first on basics, especially your organization's mindset regarding your donors. So if, if you want to improve your retention, you have got to, to have good manners, he says. You've got to have good manners. You've got to understand human nature. And you've got to have a true appreciation of your donor. And, of course, he, he gets in, into this much more and tells you exactly how you can do that. He also says, say thank you quickly and personally. And I think that people are getting better and better at this. And, I mean, it has to be personally about the project, the reason why they, they, they just gave 
don't send out one of these blanket thank you letters and th then they give your overall yearly statistics on how good you're doing. Keep it so personalized and warm. And it, 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 okay, more about that later, but here's a big one. And this in the last three months, pick up the phone. And, and uh, I'm going to uh, do more on that uh, next week. And then if you go into our YouTube channel uh, year end for both 2016 and 2017, we give sample scripts and how to make telephone calls. But picking up the telephone is so important. And it can do so much for retention. It can do so much for getting lapsed owners back. It can do so much for upgrading gifts. So it, I, I, he, he says right here, simply calling and thanking new donors resulted in approximately 40% more revenue in the following year. And then he says, put more money into retention today. Think about this because you're all going into your fourth quarter. You're going to be thinking about your budget for, for 2019. You have got to start putting money towards each donor's retention. You just simply have to <clears throat> get this book. This is Joy Olson saying, I didn't mean to be uh, so serious today, but I think this is truly alarming. And I, I'm in your shoes. I've walked a mile in your shoes for, for 23 years. And so e each week that I'm with you, I think, what would I be thinking about or what would I be worrying about? What would I be focused on this week to make sure that, that our year-end fundraising is absolutely as good as it can be and even goes beyond what we were hoping for? I think this retention is so important and you, the good news here is there's a lot of good news. You've got three months to really make phone calls, pick up the phone, visit, get that database, understand it, figure out your numbers, know exactly where you are, how are you doing, and then focus on how you can improve each single area. All right. Joy Olson here at Blockbuster Fundraising. I, I wish you a very good week. I, I wish you a fantastic uh, 2018 uh, Blockbuster Fundraising results, truthfully. So you can find out a lot more at joyolsongroup.com, blockbusterfundraising.com, our YouTube channel. Go into the playlist and find our uh, year in fundraising for 2016 and 2017 because I approach those daily on what I would be doing if I were in the office there with you. Hey, uh, also on our Instagram, on our IGTV, we are doing a daily tips there this year. Not doing them again this year in YouTube because they're there for the last, you know, previous two years. All right. Thanks for having been here today. I hope, uh, I hope that the agitator and Roger Craver and blockbuster fundraising have all got you thinking about your retention rate and how important it is to your uh, final of year-end fundraising success and let's all look for a roger craver's uh, friday report and once again get the book you'll be happy bye-bye and i'm happy you're here thanks bye-bye